Hey there, welcome to this fully narrated real-time tutorial where I'm going to show you how I create a little character illustration like this one of this fantasy guy. This is just an opportunity for me to share with you my process for how I create illustrations like this, line and color images in Photoshop. Let's get started. Just quickly, this will be a fully narrated real-time tutorial. I'm just showing you some sped up footage while I do the introduction. My name's Tim McBurney. I've been a professional working artist for 20 years and a professional drawing teacher for quite some time. And I'm here to help you draw cool stuff from your imagination, to embrace the challenge of drawing and to master the craft of line and color illustration. Now, if you're interested in the line and color style, the manga, bon dessinée, comic book style of creating worlds with simple line and color, I want to give you a free quick start so that you can get started with your own style, creating line and color illustrations like I do in Photoshop. Go check it out. You'll get all of the brushes, the Photoshop documents, and my basic thesis and process for creating simple line and color illustrations in Photoshop. That's basically how I do what I'm going to do right now. So go check it out. All right, let's jump in. Okay, so we have the blank page, the dreaded blank page of doom. Now I have some sort of idea of what I'm going to do here. I basically just want to, you know, do with, with a little bit of my time today, just do some sort of sketching to chill out. And I'm going to draw this little character from this illustration that I did a while ago. And the idea is just to maybe sort of, you know, figure in my own head the, the design a little bit more, right? Figure out who this character is. And again, just sort of get some, um, you know, practice drawing that character and see if I can make the design a little bit more fun. Um, again, because in my head, I kind of want to simplify it a little bit. So that's basically the idea. And we're going to start with, again, very simple process. I'm going to begin by sort of picking a bit of a bigger brush. I'm going to set the opacity kind of low. And I'm going to use that to kind of, again, just sort of sketch around and, and see if I can sort of find a pose. Again, I'm thinking about this a little bit more as a character design. So in that instance, what we're, we're thinking about is, is more just a simple way to present the character and sort of, you know, think about the costume, a little bit of the gesture and, and character, you know, the feeling of it, but to a large degree, just sort of, you know, doing character design, doing some sort of sketches. And again, you know, this is something that you know, I do a lot as a, as a job, just sort of designing, you know, different characters and yeah, just sort of going to go through it. And again, the, the idea is this is just sort of a quick little sort of, you know, drawing slash sketching session. We're going to, you know, complete it, make it a finished illustration, but, um, you know, it's not going to be, um, you know, like a, a fully sort of detailed or crazily rendered image or anything like that. And this is what I recommend for building a reliable process and, and also, you know, a reliable habit, a ritual for drawing. Something I talk a lot about in my courses and my teaching in general is that if you just sort of get used to sitting down and doing it, you kind of just get in the habit of doing it, you know, and that's sort of what I do, right? There's, it's just, it's like, let's draw something. This will be fun. So, in the beginning, we're just going to block in a little sort of stick figure. Now, typically, again, I'll sort of add some form or underlying structure here by thinking about where that rib cage is. We've got center line and, you know, blocking out the proportions a little bit. Thinking about where the rib cage is, where the top of those hips are. Again, you can see I've put in some straight lines thinking about maybe there being a horizon line somewhere there and again um, 
you check out the the channel i have some good um you know tutorials and advice on drawing straight lines and this is a perfect reason why you might want to do that now these are not the straightest but again the more important thing here is that we place them relative to each other so that we are getting that sort of feeling of a perspective grid all right so we can sort of think about the, the space the character is occupying so thinking about a pretty sort of standard pose, let's think about where that spine is going behind the rib cage. We rough in the ball of the head. And again, I'm all thinking about this as kind of a sort of a three quarter shot, right? So it's, it's when we're doing character design or sort of sketching for ideation in this way, it's um it's often good to to sort of set your angles and set all of your stuff for form right so that's what we're trying to optimize for um, elbow is at the bottom of the rib cage and again I, I want his you know his arms to kind of be a little bit out right sort of showing that he's an active character you know and his design is something i did quite a while ago and um, you know it typifies a lot of the, the sort of standard fantasy design decisions that I, that I kind of make again it's not meant to be original for me um, just meant to kind of be a fun character design so I'm just placing a lot of these marks if we look at the if we sort of go back and sort of look at that reference you can see Again, one of the main things I'm trying to do is just place in these little marks, like the things curving around. I'm trying to, you know, put in these sort of secondary forms, all of those big, um, you know, elbow pads and things, and just go through and, yeah, and do all of that stuff because that is what will, oh, let's put this back on the other screen. Yeah, that's what will allow me to do the second phase in, in a much easier way. So a lot of this is structural. So what I'm doing is setting up the next phase of the drawing that I'm going to do, where we'll hopefully be able to, you know, roll through this and add a little bit more um, sort of personality and structure. Sorry, not personality, we'll, and, and you know, sort of character. Um, at the moment, what we're thinking about is structure, just structure where things are. And um, if you want to draw fast, that really, in my opinion, is the key. You you sort of start, you know, sort of start um, just thinking structure, 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 and, and that kind of makes sure that everything kind of goes well, you know, <laughs> after that. Um, yeah, if you get all that stuff right, everything else is a little bit downhill. So just thinking about where some of these other sort of forms that he's got come from and again got armor boom. Boom. so yeah we don't we don't need to do the drawing super accurately we just need to make sure that things are lining up things are in perspective that that really is the key to form drawing let's flip it keep flipping make sure we're sort of on the right the right page as it were and you can see he's kind of like leaning forward a little bit right if we drop a, down, a line down from the head you can see that again it, it does feel like he's kind of leaning forward a little bit um, and again you know the you can adjust any part of it to sort of fix that um, here if I got sort of edit transform warp right you can just sort of warp those things around or you could just redraw it again it's not going to make much difference to the overall sort of speed of things I'm just going to push the pelvis forward a little bit more um, and again what we're just doing here is adjusting that sort of postural line so now you can see if we drop a line from the sort of center of the head right all the way down we're getting a little bit sort of further so still a bit here right so that means this one's coming out here a little bit 
So again, we could kind of just edit, transform, warp. And I normally have warp set to a, a keyboard shortcut, which is um, something you can do. You know, you just go um, edit, keyboard shortcuts, and then we've got, um, we've got edit, transform, warp, and one I want is to just have that as F1, just because that's what I've always had it at, right? So now if I hit F1, right, it gives me warp. So set, setting those things to a, to a shortcut key that you know you're comfortable with is kind of useful. I don't know why it's not like that on this machine. It totally should be. All right. So again, it's got some sort of, let's think about the structure here. It's got these kind of rings. And it's going to have some kind of right. So the idea is again, he's got sort of like the hips are quite big, you know, which is which is a tricky thing, you know, but um, you know because it, it is potentially going to make his figure feel a little bit more sort of not even feminine even, but but kind of um, yeah, we're going to sort of lose that sort of smoother sort of transition right so it's going to make him feel a little bit older often those sort of armor silhouettes and things are a little bit a little bit goofy but anyway it's something i, I want to sort of play around with and and those are exactly the sort of details that um you know these types of little sessions are meant to resolve um, so the idea is he's got yeah just sort of little little hands here now here we're sort of oh we've got a tangent again that's kind of okay let's just make sure again I feel like this arm needs to come all right sort of down a little bit um, Gonna sort of make it go out a little bit this way. So again, figuring out the again the structure of that is something we can fix later. Let's flip it again. Keep flipping. Again, frequent flipping will save you a lot of time. I feel like one of the problems here is again it feels like the bone is kind of coming a little bit more like that. This is a situation where probably what we could do is move this whole thing just see what that looks like if we move that up because there'll be a shoulder pad under there all right so I feel like yeah just moving that up even like a little bit further again you could also sort of transform um, again or just erase And you do have to ke be careful if you sort of start transforming stuff and, you know, it kind of gets, you, you sort of get knocked off your perspective lines. If you start transforming your perspective lines that should kind of be straight, um, you can run into trouble. So again, you just got to keep, keep in mind where that stuff is. All right, so again, that's where horizon line is sort of meant to be. All right, this one's going to be bit more angled that way all right and I might try and do again I like the idea here of the portrait right and what that kind of looks like so we sort of got ears and then a helmet again that kind of cuts this line there and then again I'm leaving room for what will be some other sort of shoulder patty things. Yeah. 
Yeah, so again, there'll be a bit of room there. And again, I like the idea of having those Roma, Roman style helmet things that kind of can sort of be there and sort of cover up your face. So again, if we sort of think about, I can still see the structure of that head roughly where it's meant to be. Again, that's kind of where that halfway point is going to be. So we're going to have eyes somewhat there. Again, I'm, I'm moving the nose, making the nose like a lot smaller, giving us some more room for the mouth, which tends to, you know, give us that more sort of stylized look. And um, yeah, I'm thinking about the the weird shaped little crest, another sort of spike on the head, and again the original sort of design has right. This is actually a little bit more rounded. And I think what we need to do now is just kind of make it a bit smaller so it's going to fit on that page a bit better. And again, we're not going to have any sort of background. We're just going to have like a pretty abstract sort of shadow. Um, I feel like here we could play around with, now that we've moved some of those other things, could push that out with the warp. So again, I'm doing this on the warp. It, it can be tricky to see. You've got this silly box around everything now so as i'm twisting it right again just sort of pushing the hips out um i'm kind of looking at it on the other screen to just check whether that's okay and also you know i'm just going to experiment with where that sort of head is so doing a lot of cheaty photoshop tweaking today i'm going to hit v and then i'm just going to use the arrow keys to kind of shift it around yeah, so again, just pushing it back a little bit sort of helps. Um, sometimes I do that, you know, a lot of it just depends how much time I've got. I definitely recommend not spending too much time warping things around in the beginning. You're better off learning to erase and redo because that skill will translate directly over to drawing traditionally. And definitely, I think there is a point at which you can like start transforming stuff too much and tweaking and you know just sort of and, and the drawing just becomes a mess if the drawing sort of becomes a mess you know and it's just it's too confusing and you keep transforming it and it's not working right if you try if you make a little transform tweak and it's instantly like oh that's so much better like bam you know wow that just you know that did it <laughs> you know it just needed that little push in this direction a little push in that direction then by all means you know that's a that's a win um if you kind of you know move stuff around and then you know it's kind of like still not right and you're tweaking it and tweaking it i think that's often a sign that you might have more success sort of stepping back or raising it redrawing um and also make sure again you're sort of checking what is the move you're going to make like what what is the logical right like what is the logical reason behind that Right. Again here, you know, I feel like this this leg is still a little bit off. But again, that's sort of okay. You know, he, 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 it means he has balance. He's not directly fully straight. Um, so here again, he's sort of carrying this sword, which I think actually needs to twist sort of this way. So he's carrying his kind of weird sword thing with the hilt on and again it has a very small sort of guard and then sort of handle and again round bit at the end pommel or whatever again my sword anatomy is never that good i'm always like is that the pommel is that the that's the the hilt that's the thing i should know more 
So he's got some sort of old school design sort of curls and things on there. And you know, again, I think there's often that is like attached somewhere. Right, so that's some stuff that would normally attach this to the um like you know, to his belt or whatever. Put in that belt. Anyway, let's give that a go. Let's see what, what we get. So again, we're sort of 20 minutes in to the sketching, maybe 15 minutes into the sketching. I'm gonna make a new white layer. That's an easier way of doing it. Reduced opacity, way down. Let's, let's decide whether it's gonna be this way or that way. I think this way is probably gonna be better. Let's make a new layer. Again, um, new layers set to sheet keyboard shortcuts as well. Um, so when I'm doing these demos, we're just going pretty quick. And I, I've had these keyboard shortcuts for everything for, you know, 18 years. So um, they're all set up, you know, with actions and stuff in a really old school sort of janky way. That's just kind of how I do it. But you don't really need that stuff. Basically, the best way to, you know, do shortcuts and all those kind of things is just at the point you have to keep clicking on something and it's just annoying you know that's the point at which you know you probably can say hey you know <laughs> time to automate that right if it's if it just gets like really annoying that's that's the sign you know go figure out how to automate that That's basically how, how I sort of came about all those kind of shortcuts and just kept adding stuff and keep fiddling around with it, keep customizing it, keep making it, it your own. And, you know, I think it's, um, it, it, it is important to, to, you know, to find your own sort of way of, of doing those things. If anyone ever wants me to, you know, put out that bunch of actions and keyboard shortcuts and stuff, like how I would sort of do it, I'm happy to do that. But yeah, I mean, in general, the way I kind of view it is that, you know, you just kind of find your own way. So here, just thinking about how simple I want this ear to be. He's kind of had this weird, in the, in the original, again, he kind of had this weird animalistic kind of ear. Burn. All right, we got this. And we're gonna go here. Let's trace over there, see if we can find. So again, if you, so much of, this type of technical drawing stuff is just about sequence. If you can kind of find the right sequence to do everything in, you can often, again, it's not quite right, but. Again, not, not sure about that either. Let's try it a different way. Good way to do that is just sort of get rid of that. And it, again, I'm just not sure whether we need that much structure there. And I also want it to maybe be like at a slightly different angle. Um, not 
sure whether that's it either. So basically just running into the design of like, you know, how, how do we sort of, how are we going to show that? You know, do, do we, do we draw in all those things? Maybe, maybe we just make it like a simple shape. And again, um, these, these are the sort of things you learn drawing something like this is, um, you know, for instance, what angle, like what angle should you draw the character at, right? Like on the side might not be the best for that kind of angle. Anyway, let's do something else. We'll come back to it. That is, that is normally what, what you should do if you're ever kind of like fiddling over something like that. Again, it has like a bit of an organic feel. Thinking about shadow. Now, you know, an, an easy way to sort of play around with this would be also, you know, you could sort of draw this thing right from a two-dimensional standpoint so we can draw it and then think about like what sort of shape we want it shift control J control T oh, actually it's control J again control G control T flip horizontal let's move this over so let's see if we can get that shape right like uh, control E to merge that control T and now we could you know play around with it right you could even you know F1 I could sort of warp it around right like you know get it to be the right sort of shape you know uh, control T again move that in right like what is what is the shape that we want? And once you've sort of got that shape, then, you know, you could sort of save it for later. And now we control T and yeah, basically just sort of position it where we might want. Now, again, this is not, not an exact science or anything, but this could be one way you could sort of cheatily do it. If you just want to kind of play around. Obviously, again, we need some sort of perspective on it. And again, um, you know, just kind of rotate it and get it where you want now obviously that's you know the line quality on that is no good but this gives us the ability to now focus much more on line quality All right and then again we basically divide and conquer split up the the task into a few different sort of angles right so now I can hide that you know you can get rid of these let's put them just so we don't get confused I'll put those layers down there all right so now I've got it and I can move around all right sort of figure out where I kind of you know where we kind of want it because I think a big 
part of it is sort of, you know, we need like a nice simple way for it to kind of connect. I think it sort of did something like this before. This is probably, you know, too complicated. Again, you sort of regret doing something complicated like that if you have to keep redrawing this in comics. But again, something like that might be a good solution. And again, the idea being that, again, I like the idea of maybe having like a little sort of support for it. So it feels sort of plausible. I don't know how confusing that'll be. So I'm just going to merge that down, right? So now I've got all of that on its own layer. There we go. And again, we could play with the idea of putting some sort of support behind it. But I think, you know, ultimately it's just kind of cartoony and nice to have it sticking up. Right, so we've got again this kind of shape here. Let's get it away from here. There we go. Again, just going to keep all these things simple for the moment. Again, good to keep just gotta keep sort of thinking, look, this is not so it's not the final design, it can just be one one idea. So here this is often where if you're just sort of making stuff up, you can potentially run into trouble. And the trouble is that, you know, it's very easy to not you know, I haven't done an accurate base. So the question is how do I, you know, how do I make sure we don't go completely off the rails? And I think a big part of it is that A, you can just be sketchy, you know what I mean? Don't don't feel like you need to be 100%, you know, sort of accurate and do finished lines, you know, if, if I sort of sketch, you know, some of these things out, right, we can always, you know, erase those lines. So, you know, if you're just doing concepts, just playing around, don't don't feel like you need to get all that stuff 100% sorted in the beginning. The other thing is we need to think about the, the sequence that we do it in, right? So what's first, what's second, etc. And, you know, probably sort of zoom out a little bit as well. Right, think about what's coming first and again see if we can get some of those initial key lines sort of in there All right, so we got this coming down here this and then you start to build it right you start to sort of see again we don't need that but we do need the again the idea that he's sort of got protection or armor on his neck Again, I like the idea that maybe he had right, some sort of armor over there. And here again, we can sort of trace some of those things. Right. Just make sure we're getting stuff in the right spot. And also just, you can play around with the idea of broken line, you know, we don't have to get everything to be 
100% nailed in, you know, and clean. You know, you can just sort of suggest these things, you know, if it's like a sketch, then it's a sketch. And again, sketch doesn't have to mean like sketchy. The idea is sort of, you know, we're just kind of messing around, you know, we don't always have a plan. We, you know, we, we're not sort of aiming for anything. Again, it doesn't need to mean to mean that, you know, you have to sort of do stuff in a sketchbook. Often, you know, I'll sort of say, hey, this is a sketch and people will be like, oh, that's really finished or blah. The point is that, you know, uh, if there's something that's a little bit off or, you know, something that I'm not 100%, you know, standing behind from a from a detail standpoint, right? Like that's why, because the, the attitude about it was a sketch, right? It was a, it was a, it was an, an unplanned idea, right? It's not like, um, it's not like I was sort of sitting there planning it, you know, it's kind of like whatever, whatever happens, happens. All right, let's see if adding these things kind of helps bring it together a little bit. Boop. So you can see this is like not quite big enough. And again, see if I, c I should probably put at least something in there like that. I feel like maybe that's a bit much. And again, what I'm sort of noticing is that, you know, from a redrawing and a comic book sort of phase that from a comic book perspective, sorry, that, you know, there's a lot of complexity here that's probably not useful. So that's where, again, you know, from a sketchy point of view, I might just sort of say, let's, let's, let's just hack that out, you know, let's erase that. Let's see if we can make that a bit simpler. Just see if we can streamline that idea. And again, I'm sort of looking at that. On the, on the other screen as well. Maybe again, just see if I can get rid of these lines. So if I can just kind of make it a little bit simpler. That might help. I think that will be the case with a lot of these other shapes as well. Because I, I do feel like some of those areas were a little bit, right, a little bit messy. When it comes to design, like simplifying stuff is often really effective, but quite challenging, you know, when it comes to just sort of drawing stuff, I'd say often, you know, it can appear like, oh, you know, you can solve a lot of problems, like, you know, stuff just being a little bit boring or a little bit, you know, like it's kind of not working or whatever. 
you can often fix those things by just sort of adding more but in comics if you keep adding more then you've got to keep drawing it again and again which is sort of annoying so it's better to kind of really think about how do we design these how do we get these working how do we make an interesting easy thing that can be redrawn So again, we've sort of got this like blending here and, I, and I'm sort of going to blend it by again adding this kind of disc. Right. And this is the, the sort of the armor elbow cover. So we're going to do more like kind of just trace behind there. See if I can envision that form and again he doesn't have like sort of spiky stuff there it's just this kind of sort of padding and can put that Shadow, put some shadow under there, do with that hand later, Let's see if we can get this matched first. So again here I'm going to just, you know, put in some structure because we didn't have any before, you know, you, you know, can't, you can't survive with that, with that level of lack of of structure. And here. So let's trace that through. Trace that through. Now if you sort of get stuck again just putting like a, a big sort of central line, make a new layer or line. Let's just put a big sort of strong line there what that does we'll get rid of that very shortly but what it does is it helps to sort of visualize where the center of that thing is right so we've got the center of that um, sort of sword and stuff just make sure I'm not drawing on the wrong layer and the other thing that I think is you know really important here is to make sure that the size of that hand is going to be okay. So ha now, now what I will do, again, I think these fingers need to go this other way. Oh, that's wrong. This little finger needs to be. Okay, so let's make sure that's. Again, make these bigger. Thumb. And again, I forget whether these are, I feel like, you know, it would sort of be maybe like a leather glove here with some um, other stuff on top. Now, let, as I said, let's try and make sure we match that. hand size and feel over here. So here we've got, again, because again, the, can, the hands can be sort of big, but I don't want them to be too big. That middle finger needs to be a bit smaller. And we 
looks that it had. One of these nonsensical fantasy gauntlet things. And I think the idea here is that okay, just repositioning repositioning the, the tablet. Yeah, so again, I think the idea here is this is like a little bit like there's a little bit of a little lip there, but not heaps. And again, the question is like, is that hand too big? And is that hand too big? Probably a little bit. So again, we can cheat. And here as well, can we cheat? Sure can. Just make that a little bit smaller. And one of the things we can experiment with is like, well, maybe like sort of, you know, again, having sort of daintier, smaller hands might work. Again, not sort of pushing the cartooniness of it quite so much. But in that case, what I'll do is just keep that the same size, but we'll, right, we'll sort of push, push that lip a little bit more. And I think one of the things I did have was sort of, again, some sort of circular and I'll sort of keep it to three, but sort of bumps here. And again, let's push that there. And again, I'm sort of going to right, draw through, like imagine what's going on there. And then So in this case, the um, sort of el you know the elbow armor is actually sort of compressed because the right because the the elbow is actually closed. So again, we sort of draw it a little bit differently. Here is again we'll have that sort of shape. So again, not not convinced about this. I think this really needs to right, really needs to fit a lot better, you know, because this is going to be tight on that armor. So again, some of these shapes not quite working out. Let's see if we can get them feeling a bit better. Yeah, 
yeah, again, not not really feeling that whole thing. Let's let's forget about that for a bit. Let's see what else we can do. Again, keep finding center. So again, if we have a few simple lines to kind of show some structure to the armor, I think that will be okay. And what I'm going to do here is just kind of draw through all this and we'll erase it out later. Right. So again, get that belt line going around. And then later on we can sort of edit it. Structure, structure, and again, he had this these kind of weird, like hip. Hip sort of shapes. I, I'm not sure like how this actually works or plays into anything. Um, but we'll, we'll see, we'll find out and then Again, I think from a design perspective. Just have these. I think we've got to find a better, like some more interesting overlap. shapes slightly more interesting maybe mm, let's stick with this I'll try and make the bottom a little bit more fantasy or interesting and again the idea is you know I don't know whether that how that connects to anything but we don't really need to figure that stuff out if we're drawing comics it, it just kind of has to look interesting I think all right and so put some of these legs in again just kind of drawing shapes idea being there'll be another one of these things on the other side and kind of just fill that with shadow all right all right Again, we can use this. See what we get. So in my mind, I've kind of mixed, I've kind of moved from 
well, let's sort of fiddle around to let's let's just kind of finish this and see what happens, right? I've kind of tried a few things. I've tried a bit of ex sort of, of sort of experimentation. Um, and yeah, so let's just you know finish off some of these details and see see how that sort of turns out. So again, just kind of going to let these shapes be what they are. Boom. And again, here we're going to have a bit of that sort of gap in the armor. All right. Show that segmentation of the armor. I get the same thing happening. Uh, let's let's erase that thing so I don't accidentally leave it in. All right, let's draw. this in yeah not sure oh yeah yeah that's looking a bit goofy but again that's what happens sometimes when we're just kind of going through it trying to keep it, you know, go quickly. Now I'm finding I have to kind of push pretty pretty hard here. So I'm just going to check like what this in. So it's still on sort of soft, but yeah, I'm finding I'm sort of having to to press pretty hard. Again, let's see if we can turn that make that sort of even softer and all that does is just sort of mean that you know I'm not having to to press quite so hard and I think that's just because I've sort of gotten I've gotten used to that yeah um, and again all of those things just take time right like it's just a matter of sort of what what your preference is. But if you, I've been drawing a lot with um, sort of softer pencils, yeah, and you find in in those cases, yeah, you just don't need to press as hard. one of those silly sort of dots there and maybe like another sort of one there which makes it feel a little bit more um, sort of fantasy-esque anyway let's keep keep going so try and match
These are kind of maybe more attached to the bottom than they are the top. putting a few of those bumps on there some shoes um, and yeah again as I said like broken line or sort of you know figuring out sort of okay let's start here let's go here um, you know like sort of draw one bit then another bit it is is a lot easier um, when you're sort of trying to make stuff up So again, line work not, you know, not looking super, super flash here. You know, if you sort of zoom up, there's a lot of, a lot of mistakes, a lot of, um, you know, bits and pieces. See how this turns out in the end. Um, so again, we sort of got rid of that, um, but what we can keep doing is maybe trying to sort of plus, again, getting rid of some of the broken line here and there, if it's not sort of working, and thinking about like just sort of accenting some of those little bits and pieces. And again, this is one of those design things where, you know, I probably feel like taking a few more passes at it, right? Like it's kind of not, um, it's, this is like one sort of phase. And, and often when I'm doing this, you know, I'll do like sort of three in a row, you know, I have like this plus another version, another version. And, and that makes it a lot easier to just sort of go through ideas, you know, not get stuck as much. Um, where it's doing it this way often, yeah, feels a little bit more like it's easy to get stuck. Uh, yeah, I feel like this, like sort of the, the torso is like, he, he has like a very sort of long torso. Um, but again, that's, it's probably more to do with sort of where those belts are and things. Let's see, yeah, let's see if we can break it up a little bit. All right, add some. Yeah, so I feel, I feel like this pan, like this setting for the brush is like a little bit too soft. The other one was maybe feeling a little bit sort of hard because um, yeah I'm not having quite control it could be that the nib of this pencil is like uh, this Wacom is like a bit mushed um, but I mean the, the main reason is just I, I haven't used this machine for a while so I'm sort of um, adapting to this Cintiq versus the bigger Cintiq that I have sort of been working on mostly um, again let's see if we can 
segment the armor and use that sort of segmentation to help describe the form. See how we go there. Anyway, that's probably all we got time for at the moment. Let's have a go. Let's turn on contiguous. Select that, select that, press Q, go into quick mask. Let's go into pencil tool. Let's select a round brush. Let's right, so close all the gaps. I think something crashed just a second ago, so I had to restart here. But it seems to have saved everything. I was kind of surprised. Like Photoshop even came back with the, the quick mask enabled, which is kind of cool. All right, so there we go. And again, now we will hit some actions and get some quick align and color stuff happening. All right. So again, from a color standpoint, we got something pretty, pretty kind of basic here. What we'll do is, um, again, there's, a, there's so many different ways you can kind of think about starting this. Um, what I'm going to do is start with sort of a gray that I guess represents the feeling of the, the armor. And then I'm going to sort of start with a you know, sort of cooler background maybe. And maybe again, I'll sort of lighten that up a bit. I'm going to make a simple shadow. Again, like by simple, I mean really sort of simple. And again, we might play around with that in a minute, but might be good to yeah, switch to this sort of pencil brush tool thing that'll give us a slightly more interesting dynamic shadow there. I'll try and hint at maybe the shadow of this thing falling over there. Let's maybe cut out a bit. Make things slightly more. Interesting. Again, so just suggest a ground plane or something like that. Um, <clears throat> new layer for um, some background texture or something. So here again, I'm going to set to about 70%, and I'm just going to see if I can create some sort of interest by overlaying these kind of textures. And again, this is just, you know, it's making a background, but you know, it's kind of like a, you know, really simple one. Um, you know, in terms of like, you know, effort or technique, but you know, it, it just adds a little bit of something, right? And I, I can adjust the colors here later on, right? These are not meant to be sort of the finished colors, but often I, I do find here, you know, it, it, it is kind of useful to really think about that background early on um, because it means, you know, the, the image will just sort of look more and more finished as we progress as opposed to, you know, sometimes all you need is like a little bit of stuff in the background and, you know, bam, it, it just looks fine. Um, and, you know, it can be, can be, just putting that shutter layer above there. Yeah, it can be really useful to just put that in, you know, on the beginning, cause, cause then you're more likely to kind of be like, oh, it looks all right. You know, yeah, that's, that's kind of okay. Whereas if we, you know, spend too much time fussing over the character and then we don't do the background you kind of you know might think oh you know I keep keep needing more you know more and more and more in the background 
um, sorry, on the character, and, and then really it's just it's just the fact that the background's flat that's kind of making it feel a little bit empty, you know, a little bit a little bit lacking. Like you know, I just sort of need something. Well, it needs a background, you know, um, and now we've got one. Uh, it's gonna sort of fade out that background again. Just little little things like that will give it a bit of interest. All right, so simple color scheme so he kind of has what we'll do is we'll, we'll add in the skin tone sort of first now i'm gonna i'm gonna make sure i make it like pretty pretty bright because i think otherwise um you know i'll probably end up with a really oh maybe not maybe let's try we'll see we can always bring it up later with uh, color adjustments and stuff. If, if you start a little bit sort of dark, it, again, it can take a while longer at the color adjustment process. Whereas if you think about the the relative values that you've got, right? So here I've got, again, a 42, right? So if I, if I sort of bring this up, it means that, uh, again, the lines are gonna read a little bit better. Um, I mean, a really good simple restriction you can put on yourself for color is to make sure that the, you know, every sort of color you put on there is above sort of 50% on the balance or value scale, right? And, and, and that really does kind of bring out the colors a little bit more. And it means that we're less likely to sort of get caught up with, um, you know, making things too muddy. Again, a, a lot of my, you know, a lot of the stuff I do, just setting that down to sort of 40% or so, yeah, a lot of the stuff I do is just to kind of make it easy, right? To, to sort of make it simple. Um, and, and also, you know, I, I spent a lot of time early on making things like sort of too muddy, right? So much of the, much of the advice and sort of, you know, stuff that I do personally, stuff that's more sort of personal advice or, you know, if I'm sort of saying, hey, you know, try colors this way. Um, again, you might have a different set of things that, you know, you're struggling with, you know, that, that, that are sort of unique to your proclivity, your natural instinct. But certainly, you know, I would always have a, an instinct or sort of a, um, a dr I would be drawn to kind of making things more subtle. And, you know, um, you, you can kind of think, well, look, that's not the worst thing. Like, yeah, it's not the worst thing, but... You know, when, when stuff is like way too subtle or, or way too sort of gray or muddy, you know, and, and understated, then, you know, often what I need to do is counteract that and, and put some effort into saying, let's bring the colors up, let's make them brighter. And if I if personally, if I just sort of, you know, keep these colors, basically if you're using the HSB sliders, just keep them right of the middle on the bottom scale, right? It means you've got more color coming through right so we're not sort of down in those darker sort of because if you have a really sort of dark saturated color it can look a bit weird on some monitors whereas you know if you sort of stay in the brighter sort of color ranges you, you're actually seeing the color it sounds really it sounds really simple and sort of dumb but um you know if you do that then you for, for me that that really makes me think more about like the color you know of the line and color and if you're picking a simple style that that can often be what you know makes it valuable as a line and color illustration because you know you've got that mix of these kind of potentially bright vibrant colors they're actually quite challenging to get working you know if you're sort of painting everything all the time yeah it can be tricky now i forget what um forget what that because because this computer I restarted this computer I don't have that reference image up so I'll just get it up there we go so yeah he kind of had this sort of brown armor in this which is kind of interesting but yes yeah, so I'm just looking at that and it does seem like the these kind of accents and this sort of inlay this gilded thing it, it's kind of just a darker version of the main Right, of the main armor, which is kind of what I thought, but.
and I don't have anywhere as near as much of it as I did before. So here's where again, you know, um, just gonna try and select all of that, hide, and this will kind of let me again put it in a bit more without worrying about going over stuff. So here we've got again, actually, like I feel like maybe, maybe like this bit here could be different color just breaking things up a little bit see what it looks like again try that zoom out see how we go um, again just trying patterns things that are simple leather and what do you have this so that's lighter like the thing under there is basically a lighter version I mean I think it would be good to mix some of this Right, so I'm hitting 20%. See if I can sort of let's go back to brush, hit 100%. All right, see if I can get that looking a bit more warm. So again, just playing around with simple warm and color contra, um, warm and cool color contrasts. That's a bit of a mouthful. Again, I have a video on that if you want to check that out on the channel. Um, you know, the warm and cool color contrasts are really the most important thing for you to pay attention to. And that's all I'm doing here. Basically got a bunch of grays, <laughs> bunch of gray stuff. And, you know, um, yeah, just kind of, you know, messing around with warmer and cooler versions of it. See what, you know, see what happens, see what, see what works. Again, I think this will be sort of leatherish. Maybe that could be a slightly darker. So again, just playing around with different tonalities of you know these these base colors. Maybe we could put the red there. Again, that would kind of match it up, make it more matching, matchy matchy. Which again is just, you know, simple design. Um, repetition. Repetition is just a fundamental building block of design. We see, when we see repetition, it, it attracts the eye. Because um, it, it feels purposeful, right? You, you know, there's a pattern there. So your eye is attracted to it. Simple as that. Um, works every time. So yeah, you know, repetition of color. A pattern like that is going to give you a yeah pretty good sort of you know overall result like, like could these boots be nah I don't, don't think so um, alright let's try put a few of these things in bang so you can see I'm being rough right I'm, I'm like I, I've done the we've done the bit we've done the the drawing um, you know, it's just a quick image. And I've kind of spent the time really just thinking about the design, you know, like what, what's going on? What, what works here? What doesn't work? Um, how can I make these patterns more interesting? And, and probably the next iteration I do is how can we make it simpler, right? How can we, how can we make it more basic? But that's, you know, that's sort of it in that's mostly what we've got now and you know that's that's all we need to do so again basic things that I, I would normally do extra at this stage let's go back to all right just adding a super simple gradient up the character and again, you know, might be a, oh, that's on the wrong layer. Don't want to do that. New layer. All right, slightly, all right, slight little sort of gradient up. And 
and let's think about adding a bit of texture. Let's use the, the standard sort of techniques that I use. Again, set that to quite low opacity. Let's create a little bit of texture there. Right, let's sort of blend that out. And again, this is, you know, as I as I say, I talk about these sort of things a lot. Uh, I have another video on adding texture, it goes through all the process and the reasons that I that I do that. You can find that um, on the Drawing Critics channel. But yeah, so all, all I've done is basically just mixed in a, a bit of dark, right, a bit of light. And, you know, if we sort of zoom up, I've got some of this skin color sort of painted in everywhere else. That's just going to give it a slightly more painterly sort of look and feel. So here again, um, where I want, I'm just going to sort of smooth out some of those, you know, harsher brush transitions. make it a little bit sort of smoother here and there and again these things mostly just sort of are going to give it a slightly more painterly look give slightly more you know interest here and there no this is life-changing but you know it does it does help all right do boom boom All right so we can also think about maybe make new layer and now put a few sort of you know we're actually getting the the, the core the core pattern from this texture brush and actually kind of using it a little bit more There we go. Cool. Yeah, and I think that is it. So we can think about a few color adjustments. Oh, I think I've got the wrong signature there, but I'll change that later. That's 2021. I think I need the 2022 version. Um, but yeah, so that's basically it. What we can do is, you know, think about, you know, blending in the background e even more if we want to kind of, you know, make these things, you know, match. Again, that, that's going to really sort of blend it together, add a lot of that sort of noise. But, it, you know, once you sort of get the image sort of working like that, it's very easy to then, you know, add some extra contrast, right? And... You know, so one of the things I think we could do is like, you know, add, you know, a bit of, you know, make some of these cooler colors a bit cooler. Again, that's being a little bit sort of extreme. I could probably try that. just sort of reduce that All right so again just like very subtle color adjustments I mean that the color adjustment that you know often works the best is you know if we want to sort of separate the the foreground from the background All right we'll just sort of make make things a little bit a little bit sort of warmer Right, just make that sort of come forward and then probably what we'll do is another one sort of similar to what we did before All right, let's just push everything down All right so just darkening things up a bit and then pushing the blacks right and then what we'll do is sort of select color range and see if we can kind of hit the blacks there and so again that's going to pull down all the blacks um, all the darker areas. Again, this is so sort of flat. Um, 
you know what you'll find is if you right right if you kind of increased the gradient up and down the image right so if we let's see if we d oh, here we go yep so if we really like you know made a stronger sort of statement from top to bottom what you see is that you know a lot of these color adjustments and things would again maybe not that much but yeah a lot of these color adjustments let's do it above that texture right they're, they're going to affect things in a, in a much sort of stronger way right you can see that's going to really sort of push that down but again we don't need to go that strong because I, I like the openness of of you know like simple line drawings like that um, and again, something that can be useful is just a simple, you know, simple vignette. If we go, right, just put some sort of black around the place, right, pull focus on that face. And we don't need as much. We've got that sort of inherent embedded contrast in the, in the bottom, right? So if we really sort of pull more focus to the to the face of the character right um, again you know that's gonna that's gonna draw the eye sort of where we want it um, again which is sort of part of the goal so again I've sort of put that underneath some of that some of that texture which which I think kind of works a little bit better let's put it above And just soften everything out we can either increase or decrease that texture um, yeah and you know play around as well with you know maybe roughing it up if you want again this is the same sort of you know thing I do every every time right but if you know if, if and, and this is often because you know just got these sort of simple got a simple character on a background there you know it's it's not very sophisticated so if we add a little bit of texture you know it gives the whole image a bit of um, a bit of interest you know like this there's, there's there's something going on now whereas you know before it was just kind of flat sort of nothing so it still has the the embodiment of flatness but you know Maybe this like again, there's a bit of sort of red in there now. Again, it's just super subtle, but you know, those things make it a little bit more interesting when you view it bigger. So a good, you know, example of that is like, you know, if you're just sort of scrolling through Instagram and you see this and it's small, you're not gonna notice any of that. But, you know, maybe if we post this on ArtStation and someone's viewing it, you know, at full resolution on a on a high on a high end screen, you know, at hundred percent then you know you 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 will see that you know if we put that to 100 percent you know now you're going to see some of those more you know subtle bits and pieces right and that's going to be interesting you know that's going to be something that's you know maybe worth looking at um you know and, and just gives the surface of the painting a bit more interest so that's basically it that's all we've got thanks for hanging out and um you know listening to how I go about this. If you do want to, you know, if you're any of these things you're, you're looking at and you're not quite sure how I'm doing it, check out the quick start guide and a lot of the other videos I've got on the channel. They sort of cover pretty much every technique I've used here. Again, as I always say, the most important thing is to try and draw something interesting um, that, you know, inspires imagination, which hopefully this is doing a little bit, you know, again, it's just a character design, but you know, it really is in what you draw and, and, and you know, how you think about it, trying to make it interesting. Uh, the technique and the process is just there to support that. Anyway, that's all I've got. Happy drawing. We'll catch you later.